Okay then my friends, in this lesson we're going to practice a little bit more with what we've learned so far to add an edit feature to this application. What I'd like to do is make it so that when you click on a book in this list, this book template turns into a form with two inputs. One for the title, one for the author. And then we're going to have a confirm button as well to submit the form. And those inputs should be pre-populated with the title and the author values for that book that we want to edit. Then we should be able to update those values in the inputs. When we click on the confirm button, it's going to send some kind of request to save that change. Once that's done, then the form template needs to swap back into the original book list item template, but now with those updated book values that we edited to. Now that's quite a lot to do, so we're going to tackle it over two lessons. In this lesson, we're going to focus on swapping this book item template right here into a form with pre-populated inputs when we click on a book. And in the next lesson, we'll focus on saving the changes and swapping the content back into the book item template. So then, let's head to the code and think about how we're going to do this. Right, so the place in the template where we want this functionality is in each individual book list item. So let's head to the book template first of all. And inside this book template, we've got an li tag. Then inside that, we've got a div tag for the book details. And below that div, a delete button. So we want to trigger the content swap when we click on a book, right? And the way we'll do that is by then sending a get request to an endpoint like forward slash books forward slash edits. Now on the server, in the request handler for that endpoint, we'll send back a response, which will be an edit form template. And then that's going to replace all the content inside this li tag. So a user can type in a new author or title for the book. So then what shall we attach this hx get attribute to, which is then going to trigger that get request to get that edit form? Well, we don't want to add it to the delete button because that would just be stupid, right? And also, if we attach it to the li tag, then that might cause a conflict with the delete request on the delete button. Because if you click on the delete button, you're still clicking the li tag as well. So it makes sense to me that we should just add the hx get attribute to the details div right here. And then only when we click on the book title or author inside that div, are we going to make that request and swap out the content. That makes sense. Right, so let's say hx get to make a get request. And this is triggered by a click to this div, which is the default trigger in this case, right? Then we'll set that equal to forward slash books, forward slash edits, then a forward slash. And then we also need to add the ID of the book as a wrap parameter as well, because when we send an HTML template of this edit form back, it's not just going to be a blank form it needs to be pre-populated with the correct book. So we need the ID for the book on the server to send back those book details inside the form. So let's dynamically output the book ID at the end of this path. All right. So now when we click on this div, we're going to trigger this get request. And eventually when we get the response HTML, by default, it's going to replace the inner HTML of the current element which triggered the request. And that would be this div. But what we want it to do is replace the whole inner HTML of the li tag that this div is inside. So we can use the hx target element to specify that by saying hx target is equal to the closest li. And that's going to find the closest li parent to this div, which is this li tag right here. And now when we get the response, it's going to replace the inner HTML of this li tag. So all the stuff right here, which is what we want. So then all we need to do now is handle this request on the back end and send back an HTML template of the edit form. So let's do that. First, let's go to the app.js file and set up a handler for this new router below the rest of them. This time we say app.get because this is a get request and the route is going to be forward slash books, forward slash edit, forward slash, then a colon, and then ID where the ID is the route parameter, right? Then we need to make the handler function, which fires for this route. And that takes in the request and the response objects as argument. All right, so inside this function, the first thing we need to do is find the book with this ID. Because remember, when we send the HTML template back to the browser, we need to pre-populate the input fields with the correct book. So then to do this, we can say const book is equal to books underscore data and then use a method called find and invoke that. Now this find method fires a function for each book in turn in the book's data. 
And when we return true for a book, it assigns that book object to this constant we made. So we want to return true when the ID of the book in the array is equal to the ID in the routes, which we can access by saying request.params.id. All right, so now we have the book and the next step is to create the form template and use this book within that. So let's create a new view file for that form called edit.js. And inside that, we need a new function. I'm going to call that create edit form template. What a mouthful. And we set that equal to a function which returns a template string. Now, remember to get syntax highlighting, we need to say forward slash asterisk, then HTML, and then asterisk forward slash again. All right, then. We also need to export this function. So let's do that first at the bottom. We'll say export default create edit form template. Okay then, so this form is actually gonna be quite similar to the form that we have on the homepage right here. So I'm actually gonna copy this and then we'll change it a little bit. But to begin with, let's copy it and paste it in here. And let's scoot this back so it looks a bit better. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is remove all of these things because we're not making a post request from this form just yet. Okay, so we have the form. We have an input for the title and also for the author. And now we can also add the pre-populated text inside these input fields. Now to do that, we need access to the book. So let's accept that as an argument. And later, when we invoke this function from the send method right here, that's where we're gonna invoke this function. We'll pass in, not this one, it's from this handler. We're gonna pass in the book. So we have access to the book. And then what we could do is pass the value attribute to these and set them equal to the book title and the book author. So dollar sign curly braces, book dot title. And then down here, we'll say value is equal to the book author. So book dot author. All right. And I think my friends, that is pretty much it for the template, just a simple form with two input fields and they're also gonna be pre-populated with whatever the book title and book author currently is. Okay, so now over here, we need to send a response by saying response.send and that response is gonna be whatever this function returns, create edit form template. So let's say create edit form template. I'm gonna click on that to import it up here this thing, let's paste it above the book's data to keep things a bit more organized. And then back down here, we need to invoke that function and pass through the book as an argument. So now we're returning the template created by this function based on the book that we have, all right? So the book that we click. So I think my friends, that's everything. Now we just need to try this out in the browser. So then let's try this out. I'm gonna click on this one and we can see we get the form response where the fields are pre-populated with the name of the book and the author. Same down here, The Way of Kings, Brandon Sanderson, awesome. Now, there is one thing I do need to change and that is the text inside the button. It should be confirmed, but I'll do that once this video is finished. You don't need to watch me do that. And also, when we click on this button at the minute, yeah, it's gonna submit the form, but we're not actually sending a request to the back end to do anything yet. It's just probably gonna refresh the page at the moment, which it does. And then when we click on this again, we see the list. So we need to hook up this form in the next lesson by making a put request to edit the data on the server.